Hi everyone, my name is Dave Sherman. The video you're about to see is the air brake test inspection from the California Commercial Driver Handbook. All drivers are required to perform this inspection during the pre-trip inspection on vehicles equipped with air brakes. There are nine brake inspection tests and all are considered important. They can be performed in any order as long as they are performed correctly and effectively. To fully grasp the purpose of each of these tests, it is important to know the major components of the air brake system and how they operate. I will perform each test and give a brief explanation for the purpose of the test. For more information about this inspection, please refer to the latest California Commercial Drivers Handbook. So to begin with, again, I want to reiterate, this, these tests can be done in any order. I'm going to do it in the order where I thought was the best, but you can do it in any system that you want as long as, long as it's a logical, um, efficient way to do it. So test number one, test number one and two kind of go together, but I'm going to explain test one first. Test one is a simple test. This test evaluates the condition of the rear brake spring canisters. This test is really simple. Place the transmission in drive and gently pull against the parking brake to check if it will hold. Okay, I'm transitioning now to test number two. This test is called the service brake test. This test evaluates the mechanical components of a portion of the brake system. Here's how we do it. With, a normal, with normal air pressure in the system, hold the steering wheel loosely and drive the vehicle forward about five miles per hour and apply the service brakes firmly. When doing this, observe for pulling to one side, unusual feel or delayed stopping action. Okay, so for this test, I'm gonna be transitioning to test number three. And for this test, I did the first two kind of in the out floor or maybe right out on the apron, but now I'm gonna take the time to drive around the station to the back of the station where we have more room to work. I can put my chocks out and, and continue this test. So this test number three is called low pressure warning signal test. This test evaluates the low air alarm so that you will be warned if you have low air pressure. Here's how we do it. With normal air pressure in the system, engine may be on or off, but ignition must be on for alarms to function. We're gonna release the air pressure by rapidly applying and releasing the foot brake. The low air warning light should activate between 55 and 85 PSI, but must activate before 55 PSI. Okay, now I'm transitioning to test number four. This is called the spring brake emergency activation. This test is to make sure if you had a catastrophic air leak, the parking brakes would activate to stop the vehicle. This test requires the engine off, but ignition switch in the on position. Step one, release the parking brake. Step two, release the air pressure by rapidly applying and releasing the foot brake. And step three, the parking brake should pop out and activate the parking brakes between 20 and 45 PSI. Here we go for test number five, the air compressor buildup test. This is evaluating the air compressor's efficiency. The engine must be running at normal idle RPM. The compressor must be able to build from 85 PSI to 100 PSI within 45 seconds.
Number six, the air compressor cutout test. This test evaluates the compressor's cutout switch so that the brake system doesn't get overpressurized. The engine must be running and pressure gauge must be rising. The governor cutout occurs when pressure gauge needle stops moving, usually when the air dryer activates, but not always. The air compressor should cut out no higher than 140 PSI. All right, number seven test. This is called the static leak test. This test evaluates the integrity of one portion of the air brake system. With a basically fully charged air system, turn off the engine. Then turn on the ignition. Release the parking brake and let the pressure gauge needle settle. Time for one minute. The air pressure should not drop more than two PSI for single vehicles and three PSI for tiller trucks or combination vehicles. Okay, we're on the home stretch here. Test number eight. This is called the applied service brake test. This test evaluates a different portion of the brake system from the static leak test. With a basically fully charged air system, turn off the engine and then turn on the ignition. Release the parking brake and firmly apply foot brake pedal. Let the pressure gauge needle settle in time for one minute. Check to see that the air pressure gauge drop no more than three PSI for single vehicles or four PSI for tiller trucks or combination vehicles. Okay, the last test, test number nine. It's called the air compressor cut-in test. This test evaluates the cut-in switch to make sure it maintains adequate air pressure for the air brake system to operate properly. With a basically fully charged air system and with the engine running, begin pumping the brake pedal to reduce the air tank pressure. Watch the pressure gauge and note when the pressure gauge needle starts to rise. This must occur no lower than 85 PSI. <laughs> 